Rune Factory 5 is a role-playing simulation video game developed and published by Marvelous for the Nintendo Switch. The first entry in the Rune Factory series since 2012's Rune Factory 4, it was released in Japan in May 2021 and will be released worldwide by XSeed Games in March 2022 developer, Hakama Inc. Mode Single player video game platform, Nintendo Switch Publishers, XSEED Games, Marvelous Inc. Genres. Role playing Rune Factory 5 takes all of its many influences and presents them in a pleasant and enjoyable package. This could have easily been a disjointed affair, with so much going on at once. But a well integrated tutorial teaches you the ropes in the form of some simple tasks picked up via a bulletin board. You begin the social aspects by wandering the town and meeting everyone. Then you learn to plant seeds, and sell vegetables. You grow your relationship meter with some NPCs in town. Eventually, you even venture out into the forest for some real-time combat to save one of the town's denizens. Your hub in Rune Factory 5 is the town of Rigbarth. Spread over a big area, it's got all the shops you'll need. A general store, a bakery, a blacksmith, an inn and bathhouse and more. It's a bit too big. One of the downsides of playing Rune Factory 5 for me has been the long sojourns to get to various places I needed to visit. I didn't see a fast travel option in my playtime, and I missed it. The HUD is also small, so if I wanted to get somewhere without wasting time, I had to open up the main map fairly often frustratingly. It seems like some of the coolest characters in the village are destined to be undateable. A Viking blacksmith with 20 abs, a glasses-wearing doctor who tests her experimental medicine on herself, and a very, sorry, mommy, nine-tailed fox lady. Maybe they'll open up to me as I get deeper into the game, for now, I've got my eyes set on a shirtless beast man and a wolf girl who literally does not speak English. Soon into your first few in-game days of Rune Factory 5, you're tasked with diving into your first dungeon. This is where you first get to dig into the action RPG combat of Rune Factory, which has always been one of the most exciting elements of the series to me. Early into the game, combat is simple, but still a huge step above the basic fare of Stardew Valley. Attack animations are crisp and fluid, and locking onto enemies and dashing around them to dodge attacks feel super satisfying. On normal difficulty, the enemies and even the end of dungeon boss are hardly a threat, hopefully. As the game progresses, foes start to move at a speed that's faster than, barely moving at all, and bosses are a bit more intimidating. At this early stage Rune Factory 5 promises to be a great new farming life experience, if my opening impressions are anything to go by. Minor snafus are there, for sure, a couple of framerate dips and some frustration with placing furniture in your bedroom due to a lack of grid snapping. But I'm hoping the pros far outweigh the cons and Rune Factory 5 delivers a substantial step up from the previous game as I continue playing as I've already said, the main focus of Rune Factory 5, more than anything else, is to just do what you want. The trademark Rune Factory leveling system is in place, meaning that literally, everything you do in this game has its own skill level. So, whether you're into chatting up the townsfolk, slaying monsters, or just sleeping your days away, you're guaranteed to improve. In terms of actual mechanics, it doesn't seem like too much has changed from previous iterations of the game, or at least from RF4, outside of Rigbarth actually feeling like a town in terms of size and scope, making it very easy to jump into this game if you have previous experience. As fun as everything is, however, I can't say that the game is perfect. The biggest issue that I've run into so far concerns the game's framer 8. Being someone who plays a lot of games on the Switch, I can't say that I particularly care about everything running at a silky smooth 60 FPS, but I do expect the game to consistently maintain a decent frame rate, which Rune Factory 5 does not always do. On top of this, the game has some noticeable issues with pop-in, this is especially bad when you change into a loading zone that's right by your farm, but I'm trying to stay hopeful that that will get fixed in a future update. There's a lot going on in Rune Factory 5, and it can all feel like a mashup of seven different games. But it's all connected through a delightfully addicting Skyrim-esque progression system. As a member of Seed, I have loads of skills, and I level each of them up just by practicing each respective one. I improve my fighting skills by killing enemies with my longsword, sure. 
I also simply walk, or throw items into faraway chests to upgrade my, walking, and, throwing, skills. Sometimes, a single farming session can get me multiple upgrades. There's even a sleeping stat that goes up if I get my character to bed on time. Rune Factory 5 incorporates safety nets for many of the dumb mistakes I used to make in past games. It prevents you from using items like seeds or cooking bread at inappropriate times, which essentially saves you from wasting them. I did smash through a shipping box while chopping a tree trunk that spawned beside it. Still, it's mostly an idiot-proof game when it comes to wasting items. Some of these things carried over from Rune Factory 4 and its remaster for the Nintendo Switch. It also improves on quality of life additions from past titles like more fast travel locations than Rune Factory 4, and guide markers for major story quests. Fans can also expect returning fan favorite features like riding monsters, expandable inventory, and item stacking. I haven't progressed through enough of the plot to judge it fairly. However, even up to just the first dungeon, Rune Factory 5 offers enough information to hint at an overarching plot involving magical creatures and mysterious happenings. It's a strange adjustment, but part of me admires how Rune Factory 5 actively encourages you to explore parts of the game you might otherwise avoid given it will unlock additional character moments that stand a chance of going undiscovered. While I can't delve too deep as part of the preview, combat is approachable and engaging, although anyone looking for any kind of challenge should crank up the difficulty setting or even later dungeons will feel like a breeze. These sprawling arenas are filled with enemies and loot, complemented further by puzzles that take them a step above the randomly generated exploits found in Stardew Valley. It's akin to Final Fantasy or Persona, albeit with a much lower budget. In order to ship out certain types of produce, you'll need to start farming, and that's exactly what you get to do before long. In this pre-release build of Rune Factory 5, aligning yourself with obstructions that need clearing away, such as boulders and stumps, can take some getting used to. This is one of those instances where the character's movement is just a little too free, and some restrictions, such as grid-based movement, could actually benefit the controls. But there's a helpful new feature where your character will move forward one tile if you continue to press B, the button to use your held equipment. Once you've aligned yourself, you can crush nearby rocks in quick succession, or till soil straight down a line and then turn around and promptly plant seeds right back down that same line. The biggest difference is the world in which you're doing all this. Rune Factory 5 is the first fully 3D Rune Factory game, and I'm not convinced it was a good or necessary change. Environments are sparse, character movements are loose and imprecise in the field, and it seems poorly optimized as well. Exiting a building drops the frame rate exponentially for a few seconds, and it even struggles to keep up with camera movements in busier parts of Rigbarth. Whether it's by design or accident, even enemy movements seem off. There's a good 5 or more seconds between a foe telegraphing its attacks and you being able to flee from them. I don't think Rune Factory has to be challenging, but half of it is focused on combat. That level of looseness removes any semblance of tension from an important part of the experience.